So when I first saw this scene, my first thought was, is this like all they know how to do now? Is like just kinsling all they know how to do? Like just like shocking moment just for the sake of being shocking. I don't know. In the books, I kind of always got the sense that Ruse Bolton always had everything under control. I don't feel like Ramsey was a real threat to him in the books, but I don't know. In the show, he goes out like a bitch. His own son kills him and... That poor maester dude, that poor freaking maester dude, he's just like, I'm the maester, please don't kill me. And then, um, Fat Walda uh, and her baby get fed to the dogs, because I guess that's uh, Ramsey's new thing, in honor of his stupid bitch girlfriend, Miranda. He's like, I'm gonna feed everybody to the dogs now, Miranda, to honor you. I don't know. But, whatever, Ramsey Bolton, do whatever you want. Apparently everyone's just got a knife, a little dagger waiting just to stab someone. They'll just, shh. Everyone, this is happening. I guess is I guess every episode in this season we're gonna get someone, you know, killing someone, you know, slick. Ha ha ha! You thought I was your best friend? Nope. Here's a dagger to the heart, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. Now this episode starts off with a really really cool scene. We see Bran in Blood Raven's cave, and they're looking through the history of the Weirwood trees. Is what they're doing. If you haven't read the books. Uh, the werewood trees store memories basically so anything that happened outside of a werewood tree like they can look back and they can see what happened so he's looking back and he's seeing his dad and his uncle and he sees uh, his aunt Liana who his dad never talked about they kind of sneak that in okay whatever R plus L equals J whatever it's so clear that in the show that's gonna happen they're pushing it so hard in the show like it's like it's like it's 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 100% in the show Pretty much. Unless they're, unless they're just hoodwinking everyone. It seems like it's gonna happen. Alright, whatever. That scene was cool. It establishes the fact that he can see into the past. Hodor can talk for some reason in the past, so maybe that means something. So, they seem to be putting a little bit of emphasis on that. They seem It's like a little weird thing that they brought up, like, well, why can he talk? Because I remember in the books, I think he was never able to talk. He's always been simple, or so they say. Okay, the new design of the Children of the Forest is so... Awesome. Oh my god, it looks so much better than it did last, last year. I'm so happy that they updated it. They made them look so cool. Way more like how I thought they'd look in the book. Because they don't look human. They don't look. They don't just look like human kids. They look inhuman and strange. I really, 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 really like the design. It's really, really cool. Props to whoever made it. Awesome. What's going to be important about Bran's story this season is that through him, we are going to see crucial historical plot moments. We're going to learn things about characters that we didn't know before and we're going to probably certain theories are going to be confirmed and certain theories are going to be tr crushed all through Bran's storyline because he can see into the past. And, you know, that's that's what we all want to be able to do because we all want to know what's going on and through him we're going to find that out. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Now let's just get one little thing out of the way and excuse my language but fuck. Ali. Fuck, 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 Ali, you stupid piece of shit. I hate you and I hope you die. Not that he did anything particularly bad in this episode, but I just wanted to express my hate for Ali because he's a piece of shit. So, the guys inside of the room with John have ran out of time and the Night's Watch dudes are trying to break in. So, they're bracing for the attack and it looks like they're gonna break in. Ghost is getting really pissed off, growling, ready to attack. And then, suddenly, the wild things come, and the most awesome scene of all time takes place, and 1-1 one, one bursts through the gate, uh, followed by a bunch of wildlings, and, you know, there's only a few Night's Watchmen, so of course they're scared. scared. So one guy makes the mistake of shooting a crossbow at 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one takes the guy and pulls him through the bottom of the floor, and slams him against the freaking castle black walls and he's just freaking done and everyone else just gives up after that so at the end Melisandre comes in and they're like okay you gotta try that spell to bring back John she says the words it doesn't appear to be working so they do that little cheesy thing where it's like oh I guess it didn't work so everyone leaves the room and then Jon Snow like the final shot is him taking a breath and is back to life. Yay. But, you know, it's kind of, for me, honestly, we all knew he was coming back, but honestly, that could have been done better. 
being perfectly honest. It seemed like kind of anticlimactic. They held almost no restraint. It's like it's the second episode. I wasn't expecting the second episode him coming back, but he did. I'm pretty sure this is not the way it's going to go down in the books. I'm pretty sure it's going to go down a much different way in the books. But now that Jon Snow is brought back, uh, I think what's interesting to think about is whether or not he's going to be the same. Uh, he has been released from his vows to the Night's Watch. So, because it's only, it's to death. So he has died and he has been resurrected. So I wonder if he's just going to take advantage of that and be like, now I'm just going to go, you know, off to Winterfell because that's, she, Melisandre saw him in the flames fighting at Winterfell. And the only way he'd be able to do that is if he was released from his vows. So what I mean by, is he going to be changed is when in the books, this is book spoilers. So if you don't want to hear this, click off, you know, book spoilers throughout this in the books. When characters are brought back from the dead in the show as well, so it's not really just a book spoiler. When characters are brought back from the dead in this method, they lose some of themselves. So I wonder how John's character will be different. Is he going to be more mopey than he already is? I don't know. Uh, it's just interesting to see how it's going to be because he's not going to be the same guy. He can't be. If he is, it'll be disappointing. Because I want to see. He should be changed. That's how that he died. He should be changed. He's seen the. Darkness, as Beric Dondarrion called it. So, I'm looking forward to that. So, Theon announces to Sansa that he's going back to the Iron Islands. Okay, by Theon. We get a scene from the Iron Islands on Pike. Uh, it's the return of Euron Crozai, who in the books is like this cool pirate guy with like one like eye. He's got an, like an eye patch and stuff like that. He's like a cool pirate. And he's got all like these magical artifacts and he like sails the world and stuff. Like, this is a little weird. I don't know. In the books, uh, he does fall off a bridge, but we don't know whether or not Euron had anything to do with it. It is kind of hinted that maybe he did. Maybe it's possible that he did because Euron does want the Sea Stone Chair, as it's called in the books. Um, so yeah, it's very possible that Euron did, you know, kill him in the books as well. But this is like the third act of Kinslaying in the season so far. So it's getting kind of crazy. Don't overdo it now with the Kinslaying. Has everyone just, like, forgotten that this is, like, a big deal? Like, Kinsling is one of the biggest, like, offenses. Back in my day, when the Dragon Lords were king, we didn't do stuff like Kinsling. Alright, another thing to be excited for here is the King's Moot. Now, in the books, the King's Moot does happen, and I got really, really excited when they just mentioned it here, because a very special artifact is revealed at that point in time. And it can be really crucial to what's going on with Danny across the Narrow Sea. And I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read the books. But I guess if you haven't read the books and you're watching this review, then you don't care about spoilers. So basically it's a, here it goes, it's a dragon horn. A dragon binder as it's called. And whoever blows on it, um, whoever blows on it can control the dragon, supposedly. But the thing is, when people blow on it, like, their insides, they cook from the inside out. So since Danny has that whole fire resistance thing going on, you know, in the books it's more mild than it, is, than it is in the show, but still, it's there to varying degrees in the books. So since she is of Valyrian ancestry, when she blows the horn, maybe it doesn't, you know, like, burn her up. Maybe she lives and she can gain more control over her dragons. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll do it, maybe they won't. I don't know. Hopefully they do. But honestly, by the looks of things, she's not even going to need a dragon binder to control her dragons. Um, there's so much to talk about in this scene. Um, I guess this is the point where I just have to accept that the book lore and the show lore are just diverging on like drastic levels. In the books, the dragons are never really smarter than dogs. George R. Martin has stated himself that they're not smarter than dogs. They're not like the Lord of the Rings dragons that are like super intelligent. So they're not smarter than most people. That little thing that Tyrion said, some people think they're smarter than people. They're not. Nobody thinks that in the A Song of Ice universe. They're not. They're the intelligence of dogs. So they're changing it for the show. I got it. I'm okay with it. That's fine. So this doesn't make very much sense to me. I know a lot of people got the idea that Tyrion is a Targaryen. That This scene really is pushing that. If he is, it makes more sense, but... If he's not, then it makes very little sense. It doesn't make much sense if he is either, because last season they almost killed Daenerys. 
when she goes in there and tries to mess with them. I mean, was that just because they were mad at her at the time? I don't know, because, like, or could they sense her fear? But then Tyrion was fearful as well. I don't get what, I don't get, I don't get it. I don't really get it. And I don't think Tyrion's a Targaryen either. I mean, if he is, it's kind of stupid, honestly. I mean, maybe, maybe my mind will change if it is true in the Winds of Winter and he is a Targaryen in the Winds of Winter and George R. R. Martin reveals that. Maybe the way he writes it, maybe it'll make sense to me. But honestly, I thought a huge part of Tyrion's character was that he is Tywin's son. And that's what's so terrible and what's so awful and tragic about it is that Tywin, you know, just hated his own son so much. But I don't know. We'll see. This scene was a little weird to me. And honestly, the dragons, they're starting to look a little bit like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I mean, they looked really good last season. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they're spending their budget on something else. Because Drogon in the trailer looked really good. These two don't look... They kind of look like video games a little bit. But, you know, CG is really hard to do. I can't do CG, so you know what? A top of the line CG for a television show. Top of the line. For, and for most movies, too, it's great. But compared to the last few seasons, especially season three, they looked the best in season three. They looked amazing. I don't know. But cool scene but uh it could it could use a little bit of exp explaining i think and, you know i'm gonna bitch a little bit too you know terry is not a mil a miracle worker you know whatever happened to the suspense in this show when we knew that any character could just die at any moment now everything's so predictable like we knew we knew the dragons weren't gonna kill Tyrion. like we knew that you knew that i knew that there was very little suspense very little you know i don't know i don't know I've read some pretty damning quotes from George R. R. Martin recently of things that he has to say about the show and where it's heading. Uh, some of you, I suggest you guys go look it up because from the way he's saying some of these things, he's not too happy with the way that they're taking things either, apparently. I don't know. I don't, it's not my business. Ain't none of my business. Sipping tea. Okay, so one of the best moments happened in King's Landing, and it's really the only thing I want to talk about from King's Landing. So this peasant guy was talking shit about Queen Cersei when she was doing her walk of shame. Like, out in public, and apparently the word got back to her ear because Robert Strong shows up and just crushes this guy's head like a fucking watermelon. Like a freaking watermelon. It's just like... Just flat. Oh my god. Clegane Bowl is freaking cancelled. Cancelled. No way. No way the Hound stands up against that. No Cle... Like, the Hound... Like, you would, you'd need two Hounds. Did you see how easily he just crushed that dude's freaking skull? It's just like, no, he didn't even try. Oh, he wasted that dude. That was awesome. That was freaking awesome. Almost as cool as the giant, what the giant did. Almost as cool. So let's finish off with Arya. So apparently she's getting her sight back and she's going back to the House of Black and White. That seemed pretty freaking easy. Uh, I don't know what the frick the point of that was because in the book she's still blind and she's in the House of Black and White and she's doing other stuff. And that's still part of her training, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know whatever uh that's all i can say whatever do whatever with Arya's storyline it's stupid to me at this point i get it in the books she's trying to be no one she has to shed everything that is Arya stark and become no one but in the books i always got the feeling that she'd never truly become no one because she saved needle her sword she'll never truly be no one but I don't know. I don't, it feels like the show is just kind of dancing around a bunch of different stuff. And it's just, I don't, it doesn't know where it's going. Maybe it doesn't know where it's going. Maybe that's the drama. Maybe George R. R. Martin really doesn't want to tell them any details. So they're kind of just scrambling to figure out what the fuck's going on. Who knows? Who knows? But I'll tell you what. I'm very excited for the next episode. John's back. I'm so excited to see where that goes. Oh my god, I hope there's more Bran, and we didn't get any Danny in this episode, but next episode hopefully we get some Danny and we see what's going on with her and the Dosh Colleen. Alright, make sure you guys like and subscribe for more ideas of Ice and Fire, and I'll see you guys next week for the next episode review.